But look at the way the media is, is pushing this. We had the Daily Mail, of course, last week putting out a mom's angry Facebook post blaming anti-vaccine people for her son being exposed to measles. They said that her son, this is the way the Daily Mail put it, her son's life was hanging in the balance from measles. Yet the reality, something a little bit different. Let's play that clip. On Facebook, she posted, if you have chosen to not vaccinate yourself or your child, I blame you. I blame you. You have stood on the shoulders of our collective protection for too long. From that high height, we have given you the privilege of our protection for free. And in return, you gave me this week, a week from hell, wherein I don't know if my baby will develop something that has death as a potential outcome. Today, York Region has confirmed one case of measles in a man under 30. This person was previously vaccinated. Now, of course, in the video clip, they point out that the person that actually exposed uh, the people in the waiting room to measles, none of whom have come down with the measles, but that person was not an unvaccinated person. That person had been vaccinated. From the original story, they say the York Region public health officials confirmed Wednesday that there was one known case of the virus in the area north of Toronto and said that the man who is younger than 30, had been vaccinated, as you just heard them report. Nevertheless, they pushed the narrative that that was the unvaccinated people that were to blame for this. And when you look at the headlines, it says, Canadian mother's powerful post on measles, I blame you. And the media never pointed out the dissonance in that statement, the untruth in that statement. Now, one of the things that was in the original Daily Male story saying that she still had to wait a few more days to find out if her son even had the measles. So first they report that her son's life is hanging in the balance from being exposed to measles, or not from being exposed to measles, but hanging in the balance from measles. Then they say, well, we gotta wait to see if he's even got it. And now we know today they have a follow-up story. He gets the all clear. We're glad that he doesn't have measles, but now they say this has inspired thousands to get their children immunized because they say this post, which went viral, systematically lists and debunks the various myths surrounding vaccinations. Really? Did she really debunk any myths? What kind of myths did she expose? Well, the idea that we all think that positive thoughts and laws of attraction and dancing by candlelight on a full moon, somehow those of us who question the safety and the efficacy of vaccines think that dancing by candlelight under the full moon is going to protect our children. No, that's a really dangerous straw man argument. It's obviously absurd. That's not what we believe. Yet what she believes is the power of the collective to dictate to you what you should do in your private life. She says, you have stood on the shoulders of our collective protection for too long. It's a privilege, she says. A privilege, of course, not an individual fundamental right to have informed consent because we are thinking individuals who need to have that as a protection against the kind of medical tyranny that we saw in Nazi Germany, for example. But she also goes on to say that she is protecting us by being a concerned world citizen as all these others who get their vaccines. Well, there's a lot of nonsense in that post. And of course, she doesn't give any reasons for why she believes vaccines are safe. She doesn't point to any studies because there's a lot of studies that haven't been done looking at both the effectiveness and the safety of vaccines. She doesn't have any studies to point to. Nevertheless, she says, you're not endangered because science. That's it, that's the refutation. Just putting science in uppercase. Well, it turns out there's some concerned moms on the other side. And the way they put it was this. They did some research on who this lady is and they said, this is compiled by a dedicated group of moms who are done being shamed for not poisoning our children with vaccines. What they did was they looked at her connections just by examining her Facebook accounts. It's amazing what you can find out about people with Facebook and a little bit of searching. What they found out was that her father is actually a managing partner of a partnership run by RBC, the bank. They have stock in a company called Chorus Pharma, which actually sells vaccines. Furthermore, she's got a lot of friends on Facebook who are part of the pharmaceutical industry. So she's not exactly simply a mom. She's somebody that has financial interests in her family in the pharmaceutical industry. As one of her Facebook friends, Edward Stowe said, seconded heavily and with severe prejudice. Jen, may I share this on my LinkedIn feed amongst my pharma industry peers? 
There you go. With severe prejudice, he agrees with her, and that's the point. There's a lot of religion and prejudice being exhibited towards people who have concerns about the pharmaceutical industry based on its long history of putting things out that have not been vetted for safety, have not been proven to be effective. As we pointed out many times in 2011, as well as other times, there have been a large number of people who have been part of these measles outbreaks who have been vaccinated. It's not effective. Half of the people in 1987 that came down with measles in the United States, 52% actually had been vaccinated. In 2011, patient zero was twice vaccinated, and so were the people that they passed it on to. All of the people that patient zero passed on measles to had been vaccinated. Now we see, however, that the FAA has come up with another novel approach. It's not just naming, shaming, and blaming unvaccinated people for measles, saying that they're, we're going to kill everyone when measles hasn't killed anyone for the last 10 years. However, the measles vaccinations have. 